Our, our society is that shallow. You will be. And one of the reasons that I get up and I make fun about my weight right away is so you won't. Twelve years ago, I got sick with a thyroid disease. I used to carry around 180 pounds and then got sick and immediately went down to 150 pounds. And then they gave me radiation and I went up to 260 pounds. Did you see the movie The Santa Claus where Tim Allen looks in the, in the mirror in the morning and every day he's heavier? That was me. I'd look in the mirror and I'd go, Santa? <laughs> and I know that there are people who look at me and judge my value and judge my worth by how I look. I was flying down to Oklahoma. Down in the Oklahoma district, they do a big youth gathering, high school, they call it OK for Christ. OK, Oklahoma. And to get from Chicago to Oklahoma, we were going to this town, I think it was called Towson. And to get from Chicago to Towson, Oklahoma, I live in Chicago, um, you had to go through Dallas. Now, if you know anything about geography, Dallas is like south of Oklahoma. Don't ask me why. So I took a 727 from Chicago to Dallas, and then they were going to put me on a little Fred Flintstone plane. You know where you got to help run down the runway? And, and there's like 16 seats. And I'm sitting in the gate area, and the place is packed with all these little puddle jumper planes going to all like different parts of Arkansas and Oklahoma and Kansas. And all of a sudden, I, I heard over the loudspeaker, to those going to Tulsa, Oklahoma, we need three people to give up their seats. We will give you $100 voucher. That's a good deal. Get $300 to give up your seat. The problem was I was going to be on stage in about two and a half hours, and I was worried I would miss it. So I thought, no, I'm not going to do it. I saw some people go over to the gate, and I was kind of reading. And then all of a sudden I heard, Attention, passengers to Towson, we still need two people to give up their seats. We will give you a $200 voucher. I thought, well, that's getting better. But then no, I'm not going to do it. And I was just reading, all of a sudden I heard, Will passenger Bill Yonker please come to the gate for Towson, Oklahoma? And I thought, shoot, man, they're going to make me give up my seat. I'm not doing it. It's my seat. I bought it. So I went up to the gate and I said, I'm Bill Yonker. He said, sir, I need you to surrender your seat. I said, I won't. He said, you will. I said, no, sir. I paid for this ticket. It is mine. He said, actually, it's not. So what do you mean it's not? He said, you're just renting it. I said, what? He said, yeah, you, you don't even own the ticket of the airplane you're going to get on. You're just renting it. And you turn it over and it says property of American Airlines. And I said, you're going to bump me off this plane? He said, sure, we got to. I said, I don't understand. I said, because you overbooked the flight, you're going to bump me off. i got to be on stage in two and a half hours, and there's a chance I'm not going to. He said, don't worry, we'll get you there. And they did. They put me in a station wagon and drove me. I'm not kidding. I said, I don't understand. You overbook it, and, and now you're going to bump me off the plane. He said, oh, no, 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 you don't understand. The plane's not out overbooked. In fact, there's empty seats. I said, then why are you bumping me off? He looked at me and he said, because the plane's already too heavy. I said, what? He said, yeah, the plane's too heavy, so we gotta take some passengers off. I said, oh, nice, so you look out over the crowd, see the chubbiest guy and say, he's gotta get off the plane? The guy said, no. He said, that's silly. He said, because you bought your ticket early, you have one of the cheapest tickets, and so we, we just bumped you off because um, you have a cheap ticket. But then he kind of looked me up and down and he goes, but it was a good choice, wasn't it? I about climbed over that counter at that guy. We judge each other by how we look. And the sad thing is, I wish I could say it stop after high school or even after college, but it doesn't. And because it doesn't, so many people are more concerned about how people see how they look. Let me ask you, it's really a question of a greater man than me. 
But the question is this. Do we judge a tree by its bark? Or do we judge a tree by the fruit that it bears? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. understood that too many people are more worried about what's on the outside. Is your life just a masquerade? I can't answer that. But if you are more worried about your bark than about the fruit you bear, with all due respect, maybe you ain't living. There's another